Marcus, Matt, thanks for sitting down with me. Um, you know, I think this is obviously something near and dear to our hearts. And, and when we really think about it, we all have a, a great connection, um, not only to the military, but as military kids. Um, you know, we represent a lot of, you know, the, the kids of service members out there that, um, you know, are going through some of the same things that, that we went through when we were kids. So, um, you know, why don't you guys uh, give me a little background on your experience growing up in a military household? Yeah, um, so definitely my dad served for 32 years. Um, he definitely taught me a lot about life and also being a, a military child, you know, um, being stationed in different places like Fort Campbell, uh, Fort Rucker, different so things like guy. that. Yeah, Army guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so definitely being stationed at those different places uh, definitely helped me be social, you know, meeting new yeah. friend groups and just playing sports as well and traveling and seeing different people and how people interact with each other and things like that. So, uh, My mom and dad both uh, went to West Point, um, both played sports. My dad played football um, and my mom played softball. And then um, in 89 when they graduated, they were deployed to Iraq, were overseas for about a year and a half and then came home um, back to the States and were able to actually uh, exited the military from there. And then um, I was raised in Michigan and growing up with uh, that background in my family, um, really just all the things that they instilled in me have really just car carried with me uh, as an adult. All the, you know, the discipline that I have today is really just rooted from the way that they raised me as, um, you know, a, their former cadet lifestyle. <laughs> and, uh, and just, you know, really just been um, super honored and very proud of my mom and dad for what they did. and and you know, we're able to serve our country um, and have just really instilled in me like so much appreciation for the countless men and women who've sacrificed um, you know, the ultimate price for uh, our freedom and, and for all the privileges that we experience today. So um, that's probably my, my basic, biggest experience and something I, I'm you know, very uh, just proud to represent. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you, you guys represent your parents well. My, my dad was in the Navy, uh, served 24 years. You know, I think we all kind of grew up with similar experiences where, you know, you know, dad's not around for, um, you know, months on, months at a time. Uh, that, that can be extremely tough. Uh, you know, my dad did multiple deployments with the Navy, um, you know, and continues to this day to go out on aircraft carriers and his, in his, uh, job in the Department of Defense. Um, you know, what uh, what was your experience with that, Marcus? Like, I know you grew up all over, but um, did you have times like that when you were growing up? Yeah, definitely. Um, my dad, he would go away for about two, three months and things like that, and he would talk to me. And even whenever I was young, he'd be like, hey, whenever I'm gone, I'm gonna need you to take care of your mother. You know, your mom definitely older than you and everything, but just those little things teach you a lot about growing up and being disciplined and also like taking care of things that you need to take care of. How often were you able to talk to him? Um, I would be able to talk to him probably once a week around that time because of school and everything that he had going on as well. But me doing sports and moving around a little bit, things like that, I, I still got to talk to him. So I'm very fortunate yeah. for that. Yeah. Yeah. What, um, you know, as, as we, talk to military kids uh, during this month, what, what's something that you would want to um, tell them about? You know, give them a, a heads up on or give them some advice from, from your time, you know, moving bases, uh, dealing with deployments, um, what's something that uh, helped you? Um, the main thing is talking to people that's in the same shoes as you, you know, um, being social, you know, definitely moving around and things like that can make you want to be away from people. However, talking to people that's in the same shoes would definitely help out. That's, that's the main thing because going through something alone is not the best thing with mental health and things like that because little kids have, you know, mental health issues that's that right. they need to talk about. So that's the main thing. Wow. Yeah, I, I think I was really lucky, um, you know, growing up in San Diego, uh, I, I, you know, wasn't on base, um, but growing up in that community, surrounded by the Navy every day, um, you know, it, it really took, uh, 
it, it, it gave me my, my calling to serve. Um, you know, it gave me, uh, you know, really that, that outlook and that plan and say, hey, you can have, um, you know, a, a really cool life. Um, you can come back here and do awesome things. You know, some of the people you'd meet growing up in a, in a military town, um, you know, and, and you meet more and more people that are in those same shoes and doing those things. Um, you know, are there, uh, you know, some special people from, um, you know, either your mom and dad's connection uh, to West Point that you grew up around or uh, Marcus that you grew up around on bases that, that you consider mentors um, that have, you know, helped develop you to, to you know, be really, you know, someone who's succeeded and, and is, is doing something at the highest level now? Um, I can speak for, for, for me, um, an example of that. Uh, a classmate of mine, or a classmate of my mom and dad's, um, is actually just was celebrated this past weekend. Uh, his name's Greg Gatson, and lost lost both of his legs um, when he was in Desert Shield, Desert Storm, I believe. Um, same as my uh, same event, my mom and dad were both a part of, and um, he's been someone that it, it, you know my parents have just always you know kind of pointed to of someone who has gone through something you know, kind of unimaginable, right? Like a life-changing uh, accident, unfortunately. And he, that, you know, he's just such an, a, an incredible example of persevering through difficulty. And since that event has happened, he's continued to do so many tremendous things in the military and throughout West Point. Um, he's an incredible speaker, been fortunate to meet him a few times. So that's, you know, an example of somebody who I, you know, is just really a, a absolute hero for so many people and, uh, um, you know, just has truly given himself uh, completely to our country and has continued to serve so many people around the, you know, around the world. So mine is a little different. Um, mine is basically the Negron family. Um, one of my friends, Isaiah, his dad was uh, in the military as well. Um, and they just showed me the importance of celebrating events, you know, such as birthdays, um, definitely uh, anniversaries, things like that. But they just showed me the importance of a military family that cares about all things, you know, military appreciation, however, you know, different things as well. Like those small little things help you connect with your family, friends, and uh, other people that you end up meeting over time during life. So. No, I mean, and that helps tremendously to have, you know, that community uh, around you. And I think we're all really lucky, um, you know, having grown up uh, around the military community, see how tight-knit that, that community can really be. Um, and I think one thing that we're seeing now is as um, our service members get out and they, and they, you know, move on from their roles in the military, um, you know, we're seeing more and more people struggling um, you know, with, with losing that uh, community, that camaraderie, um, dealing with the effects of PTSD, um, you know, and really, uh, you know, the mental health struggles that come along with that, um, you know, and, that, and obviously it's a big topic to unpack, um, you know, but as we, uh, as, as we prepare ourselves for, um, you know, this, these salute to service games, I think it's important um, that we have some conversations around this because it, it means more um, to a lot of people that wore the uniform, uh, you know, that we're out there wearing, you know, camouflage than we could ever know. Um, you know, for so many people that grew up in New England um, that serve, they look at us and say, you know, here are um, the New England Patriots taking time to recognize me, um, taking time to represent um, the service that you know I uh, faithfully executed for this country. And um, you know, when it comes to to representing them, what's something that um, you know really you guys will take with you as you as you go on the field um, in these next few weeks? Um, you know, other than, hey, I got some different swag this week. Um, you know, with our ties to the military, what's something you're going to be thinking about as, as you go out there, um, you know, and ready to play? Yeah, I, you know, for me, I just, uh, what comes to my mind, especially when the national anthem is being, 
played um, after the conclusion of that, I was just like an ultimate feeling of gratitude to be able to stand on that field and um, be a part of something you know as special as playing and uh, as special as playing in the NFL is, and how fortunate I am for that. Fortunate to be able to um, do that and represent. Uh, not only the Patriots, but represent uh, you know everyone who's supported me, helped me get to where I'm at. But then also honoring, especially over the next couple of weeks, honoring so many people who've you know paid the ultimate sacrifice, given us the opportunity to be here uh, and you know play a game that we love. And I, I just think it's a an amazing opportunity to you know thank so many people around the world who've um, sacrificed so much, people you know who have lost so much, um, and honor you know and at the same time honoring them while we're playing this great game. So I think yeah, it's a great I would opportunity. Definitely, uh, definitely say the unity and camaraderie of uh, everyone coming together for, for one thing, you know, uh, the national anthem being uh, played and everything, everyone, you know, definitely knows how big of a deal that is for our fallen soldiers and things of that nature. So that's the, that's the big thing that I definitely feel like that's important. Yeah, and ultimately when every single one of us that has taken the oath of office there's a moment when every service member signs up, signs their name on the dotted line, and raises their right hand and takes the oath of enlistment. Um, you know, and that's a moment where you do experience that brevity of, you know, this isn't, this isn't my, um, you know, my my life to live anymore. I'm I'm, you know, serving something bigger than myself now. Um, and and to think, we have the opportunity, to represent. You know, someone who made that ultimate sacrifice, mm -hmm. someone who's given so much to this country, um, someone who has, you know, paid the price for um, having experiences that, you know, not many people can ever imagine. Um, and when we get to to represent them on the field, um, you know, when we get to meet their families and the people that love them and the people that sacrifice alongside, uh, you know, really there's no higher honor, in my opinion, as a, as a football player that we could show to, to the people who are our real heroes. Um, you know, and that's something that I, I think we all hopefully can take with us um, as we prepare for these games, as we, as we run on the field, as we play, that, you know, we're, we're representing people that were and you know, still are, uh, you know, the the best among us. Absolutely.